Now just to show you that this knife really does work well, I'm going to ask my uh, other assistant here, Gracie, to hand me an apple, which is right there, Gracie. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to get a paper towel. I love paper towels. Put that down here. So we're going to take this little knife, we're going to cut, right? Voila! Voila! Cut apple. So even a tiny little knife like this is very useful when it comes to lunch preparation. Again, this is very non-threatening. Uh, no one's going to be freaked out by this. But the one thing I want to say about knives, which is a good illustration from cutting this apple, is although when it comes to other containers you can wash them at home at night, when it comes to any utensil, but especially anything like a knife or a knife that folds up, you always want to clean it immediately after use. And so I'm going to go over here to the sink and just rinse it off. Doesn't take much. And what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of that fruit uh, acid and I'm getting rid of all those sugars that are not only going to be a big magnet for bacterial growth, but those things will literally corrode the knife and ruin it. So now it's good to go for tomorrow. I can close it up. And here's a little trick. If you're in a place where you don't have water accessible, one thing you can do is take your paper towel, moisten it, you know, kind of wring it out a little bit, put it in just a sandwich bag, and then it's going to stay perfectly wet for your lunch. You can wipe off anything, wipe off your hands with it if you like, um, and you're going to keep your utensils clean. Well, I'm sure you're not wondering, but I'm going to tell you anyways. What do I use? And the reality, as far as the utensil goes, I don't use any of those things, although all of them would work fine. I'll show you what I've been using for the last seven years, and it's in my little lunch bag here. And the reason I show you is just because you know, when you become attached to something, you tend to use it for quite a while. And these particular items here have worked very, very well for me. This is a spork, like we described before, but this one is made out of titanium. It's Snow Peak makes it. I've had this for seven years. Uh, I think it was about $10 when I bought it. I thought, that's ridiculous. I'm spending $10 on a spoon. But you know what? Seven years later, it's still perfect. It's still lightweight. It's strong. It's durable. It feels nice in your mouth. I would recommend it highly. So the Snow Peak Spork. The other thing that I use is that I really do use a pocket knife. Here's my pocket knife. Um, this is a pocket knife that I bought about seven years ago. It's a genuine Swiss Army type knife. Two companies make genuine Swiss Army type knives. One is Vitorinox, the other one is Wegner. Um, they're actually made in Switzerland. They are very inexpensive for what you're getting and they will last you a lifetime. This knife, which is seven years old and used all the times, open and closes as well as it did the first day I got it. It's a perfect knife. It has a nice um, belly on it for spreading. It has a sharp blade for cutting. This one actually does come with some accessories that you could use. Here's a real nice bottle opener if you are inclined to open uh, those types of bottles. And this is a can opener that actually works. So here's a can opener that actually works. Um, and I've opened many a can with this particular can opener. Highly recommend it. Again, it works as well as it did seven years ago. You may wonder, what did I use prior to this? Well, about 30 years ago, when I was a first-year medical student, I was sitting in the student lounge eating my bag lunch and one of the other medical students whipped out his Swiss Army knife and I was so impressed with it that I had to buy one too. And that was my first Swiss Army knife that I used up until this one for my lunch every day, plus everything else you could imagine. Now you might think, well, why did I exchange that one for this one? For a very simple reason, the other one I became so attached to I was afraid I'd lose it. And that Swiss Army knife still goes with me when I go on car trips, camping, hiking trips. It sits in my office desk drawer. I use it constantly to open up packages and to tighten screws and things. And just to show you, this is my pocket right now. This is it. This is my original Swiss Army knife. Still looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a ding on the back, but we won't talk about that. This one's a little thicker, and so obviously for these thicker ones you pay a little more, and this is very unnecessary when it comes to using uh, a for a lunch kind of program. But this one probably was about $30 when I bought it. This one here is under $20. Um, same quality, just more gadgets. That's the bottom line. You don't need all these gadgets. The simpler the better. Uh, just look around. You can probably get a genuine Swiss Army knife for, I would say, $20, $15. 
um, sh shop around for different sales and things. But definitely, if you're if you're in to this for the long haul, this is the way to go. And he has that nice Swiss Army kind of thing about it, which means it's not going to threaten people, and most people are going to be pretty happy with it. So let's move on. We're talking about other types of containers, what to use and what to not use. Well, the first thing that you might think of, here's a nice butter container, Earth Balance, natural buttery spread, soy garden, yum. This is my son likes this. He has a milk allergy. Um, you think, well, I'll just use one of these. I can wash these out and I already have them on hand. I would not recommend using these types of containers, and that goes for any kind of container like this Cool Whip containers, for instance, because these will distort when you wash them. They will not seal properly, and over time, you're going to have a huge mess in your lunch pail. Um, it's, just, it's just not worth it. So these are single-use only items. Don't rewash them, at least not for your lunch bag. Let's move into some kind of permanent sorts of solutions. So my assistant here, Will, will pass them over. You can see a lot of different things. Here we have a bunch, all different. They're different only because we have a big family and we lose the items, we buy new ones. We don't necessarily buy exactly what uh, the same brand every time. But we start here with the kind of the queen of food containers. This is Tupperware, very good stuff. Um, it definitely will stand the test of time. It's also more expensive and the other stuff works pretty well too. Here we move into a dollar store type of item. I think this was probably less than a buck. Again, works just fine. Seals pretty easily and a little, little harder than the Tupperware, but this would be a fine container too and it's in a nice bowl size. More Tupperware, older vintage. Here's a piece from Ikea that's good for things like sandwiches. I like using something like this to actually pack meals. So often I'm taking leftovers and I'll literally put in the various, the meat, the potatoes, the vegetables in here, kind of line them up microwave it for 90 seconds and I'm good to go. My kids use these for sandwiches because they're putting their lunch bags in their backpacks and it's getting squashed and so if you put a sandwich in something like this, this is additional protection. So you gotta be a little adaptable. These I'm sure are sandwich type containers. I use it for other things. Permanent stuff is great. The couple things that you wanna remember, make sure that it seals well, that's the most important. Make sure that it's the right size. If it's too big, you're wasting space. If it's too small, you're gonna overfill it and you're gonna have a mess. And they come in different types of, of containers and of, of sizes, shapes, everything. So you'll definitely find something for your needs. So let's move on to another thing. Now some people are all freaking out about plastic. They don't want to microwave in plastic. You can certainly get a lot of containers like this one. A very nice nurse gave me this. It's a Corningware container. So it's actually ceramic. You can get Pyrex or it's a glass containers too. Very nice, very big, good for soup. You could use it for a cup if you wanted to. It has a nice sealable vented lid. Any disadvantage to this? Well, the two disadvantages to this type of a container, one, it's heavier and two, it breaks if you drop it. That second one is probably the bigger problem, so be aware, but if you're really determined not to cook in plastic, there's a lot of these types of containers out there too. You just have to be a little more careful. There's another whole category that evolved over the last few years, and that's called the semi-disposable. They come with a wide variety. This is Glad, this is Ziploc, this is Glad, but I've seen Reynolds and other brands too. And these are containers that are designed for multi-use, but they're not the same solid construction as something like this. These will last a very long time and they're great advantages. They're very cheap and if you lose them, or let's say you leave your leftovers in it over the weekend, you leave your lunch at work or something like that, you don't really want to wash it because it's gross, you could just throw them out. 